Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I'm so excited to be here, sitting in the place of Queen Viola. This is the story with Queen Viola. And uh, you know, I guess you're wondering why I'm sitting here, but don't worry. That's how uh, season two is going to be. And uh, with me, I have got one gentleman, very, very giant. And I guess you can clearly see his face now. He's called the Disco 211. Uh, some people decide to call him 122. <laughs> <laughs> it often makes me laugh by the way. 122. Kind of just plays around with the mind. Good to see you, then. It's a pleasure. How have you been? Um, 2022. Yeah. On a high note, you know, a lot of expectations. Yeah. You know, you're trying to work around the clock to see if you can, you know, mm. beat your deadline for, you know, the goals for this particular year. Yeah. You know, trying yeah. to see if you can go yeah. from your previous mistakes and all that. Mm. But I think so far so good, I can say. But of course, the January effect is in place. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> January effect. Yeah, yeah, the January effect is still there. So. Uh, I say okay. it's not that bad. The other day someone was saying that uh, this January has been short. I think he was not feeling the January effect. I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if, if you say that this January is short, eh, that means that you've not seen a day longer than 24 hours in your life. Or perhaps maybe you mm. just didn't really spend during the festive season. Oh yeah. Or you say oh, yeah. really well. One of the biggest questions, why do you think people still overspend beyond their budget on the festive season, even when they know that January is coming? I mean, we have done this over and over and people say, I'm going to try my best not to overspend in festive season, but we still do it. Well, I, I, I think it's uh, it, it has become more of a culture. I can't say it's a statement, but yeah. as you know, you spend this year, yeah. then you face January, yeah. and then you know, another festive season comes and you spend again. So yeah. I can't say it, it's excitement. I would mm. rather say it's, a, it's culture. It's culture now. You know, when you're growing up, yeah. you expect a lot from the parents, yeah. relatives, and so forth. Mm. You expect them to buy you shoes, clothes, mm. a nice meal at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. So you grow up expecting a lot. Yeah. So like, when it's your turn to provide for the family, mm. you know, you feel the general effect, you know. Yeah. It's going to be a long month, yeah. but of course, you need to expect it. Yeah. So, you will really have to, you know, fulfill all the needs and all that. So, mm -hmm. it has become a culture in my own understanding. Yeah, it's a growing up, it's a very funny thing. But anyway, here we are now, we are all grown up, <laughs> and uh, we are carrying the loads that our parents used to play for us. That's the painful part about it, but also it shows us that we are improving. And speaking of improvement, the disco is a radio personality, and uh. Uh, he's been here for a very long time and one thing i know about him is passionate about music uh if i'm to go with one genre we i think ex uh, exploit these whole hours we have got in one particular genre but i'll try as much as possible not to bury ourselves there and uh, have it all uh, i would want to know that this for how has it been like what influence has being in the radio changing your perspective with music and also art well i, I think uh being uh in the media really, really you know shaped my life somehow yeah um uh, i can say before i you know mm. got into media yeah i was going to you know mm. dance and music or the other music yeah because i was actually a dancer yeah i was yeah. so basically i was you know always looking out for this you know type of music that is high that is you know yeah. danceable yeah the club bangers and all that kind of stuff yeah. but i think you know uh getting to the media yeah. somewhat played a role that you know there's the need for maturity you understand mm -hmm. it's no longer about me it's about people yeah it's about the community yeah so it took me to a, a, a stage of my life where i have to mm -hmm. do research not for something that would be appealing to me mm -hmm. but appealing to the community yeah. and with that at the back of my mind mm -hmm. you just don't look at one particular genre of music that you love yeah so i've been able to you know maneuver through almost all genres of music mm -hmm. i'm not a very big fan of uh, the country music <laughs> 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 but but I'm, I'm getting there country, okay. you know 
for the fact that there are a lot of people out there who listen to country music mm-hmm. that love it so yeah. i do it for them so, things country. to do yeah you know so yeah. a lot of people say you know this is the type of music that sends people to sleep <laughs> <laughs> i don't debate that <laughs> <laughs> I, i don't debate that <laughs> but yeah you know mm, i'm getting used to all types of music yeah basically. yeah i think it's a great Uh, change of mindset when you mentioned that uh, joining the media kind of shifted your focus from just looking at what benefits the discourse, what benefits the society. And I think that's the drive that uh, takes people often to the greater good of existence or purpose of life. Finding out that there's something greater than you in existence, so you go for it. Yeah. I remember when I was growing up, uh, you were forced to listen to country music because you <laughs> enjoyed it. <laughs> and uh, we got to like it after all because right? we were made to listen to it so well so I, I, i think this is the mm. same reason why yeah. queen villa spends most of her time listening to country music i sh- she was the one posting us actually i never wanted to say that directly no wonder <laughs> <laughs> i never wanted to say it that way but <laughs> uh, <laughs> now it is out you have to so, sugarcoat a little yeah, bit yeah <laughs> so let her carry the load <laughs> yeah, so, The, the disco in your, uh, you know, staying in the country, we we stay in a very delicate society that is so much sensitive to even what should not bother anyone at all. I, you know, in your focus from so uh, looking at who the disco is and what the society that embraces all everyone, uh, how has this change of mindset you know helped you in? improving your relations i know you're what you're one of the persons who talk to everyone regardless of who they are what type of class they are is that something that can go back to your radio uh times or it precedes even radio no it goes past my time uh in the media yeah i think uh you know some would say it's uh being biased right. but I, i i think but i think the question goes back to my mother okay. you know most of the time when i look at myself yeah what type of person i am yeah I always give it back to my mother. Mm. People ask questions, what about your dad? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's been there, yeah? Yeah. But I think, uh, literally, mm. whatever the disco is all about, yeah. it's the uh, uh, efforts of my mom. Efforts of my mom. She's been there, you know. Uh, I quite remember, mm. I think I was uh, in high school, I was close to finishing my high school. Mm. There was one time I went out clubbing. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you know, I had uh, a little bit of uh, a meeting with her the, during the day. She w- didn't want me to go out, yeah. but you know, I don't listen to that, yeah. so I couldn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> so I went out. Yeah. <laughs> When I came back, I was like around five in the morning. Yeah. Uh, I've seen her. Okay, so I went inside, she went to her room. Mm-hmm. Then in the morning when I woke up, yeah. everybody was taking breakfast, she called me, mm-hmm. lie down. Oh. <laughs> I had my aid and I had girlfriends. <laughs> you know, it, it kind of looked funny, but you know, we mm-hmm. just went down. Yeah, she did. She went and picked a stick, she went to kill me, but she didn't do because, you know, there were girls around, my younger siblings and all that. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, she started crying, but you know, deep down, I really felt like, you know, she, she was cry. trying to shape my life and all that. And since then, I'll, it's been very, very hard for me to make, you know, mm-hmm. decisions that mm-hmm. are contrary to what she thinks. So, I, I, I think most of the time when someone asks mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. I go to where I am today, mm-hmm. it's always hard. Mm-hmm. But then uh, there the, are the other people that have played a very important role in my life. Mm-hmm. One of them is my late brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my soul is in peace. Um, he's one person that has really, 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 you know, taught me a lot about life. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the fact that uh, you will always meet people out there every day mm-hmm. is one thing that we need to take serious, actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, people out there will believe mm-hmm. or feel like, you know, attaching themselves to a certain group of people mm-hmm. will make them great. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, it's one perspective that uh, I've never had in my mind. Because mm-hmm. that is something that uh, I learned through my elder brother. Mm-hmm. You wake up in the morning, mm-hmm. you do not know who actually your guardian angel is if you're going out yeah. you meet people yeah. and how you treat them yeah. will define how they're going to treat you and define them. so yeah. that's how i go to you know understand how life is mm. and i know it might sound very stupid but yeah i'm one person that has not been heartbroken 
<laughs> Honestly. <laughs> like heartbroken relationship wise. Relationship wise, yeah. Because I know these things are meant to happen. But have you broken someone's heart before? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted that to stand out because if you've never been heartbroken and you've been dating, that means that you were the one breaking there. No, actually, you know, some someone yeah. ends the relationship. But someone I just ends. understand. Yeah, yeah that's I, the I, thing, I, by I, the way. I, I just took it like it's part of, you know, yeah. the life of being, <laughs> learning all along. You get it. It, it's something I'm, yeah. I've, I've come to terms with, yeah. you know, certain things are meant to happen in life. Mm-hmm. You don't have power over them. Yeah. So, it is what it is. Certain things are meant to happen in life and you don't have power over them. I think that's one of the realizations that so many people uh, do not get to think about it for a moment. And uh, yeah, it's a very good thing. So, uh, it's a good thing to be a disco. Uh, media personality. Right now, he is stationed with uh, CPF from, from the City of Golden Opportunity, a very uh, great uh, commercial radio station in South Sudan, Juba. And uh, he also plays a very great role in the entertainment. So let's go there a little bit. Daddy. Okay. This is one of <coughs> the subjects that people, the artists, look into the radio guys, or the media people and they say you are a problem in the country <laughs> then uh, the media guys also look at them and say no the problem is you let me first of all i think the first question is is there a problem with our entertainment industry in the country definitely there is a problem mm. uh, you know one, one thing people don't want to accept is the fact that uh, music or the entertainment is not like politics <laughs> Yeah, in <laughs> politics we only look for our win. Yeah, but entertainment, I think, uh, entertainment is it's more like a win-win situation. You get mm. it? Yeah, yeah. First of all, you're a musician. Mm. Maybe you write for yourself, or someone else writes for you. Mm. But then you go recording, yeah. and then you're looking at yourself benefiting from the song. You know, you want to be famous. Yeah. You want your songs to be played all over. Mm. But you do not care about what is coming from the other side. What yeah. other musicians are doing. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. I feel like it's one of the biggest problems we have in the country. Mm-hmm. The museum do not acknowledge themselves. Mm-hmm. You feel like you're, you're greater than the rest. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. When someone is dominating mm-hmm. music wise, yeah. they do not want to accept the fact that this person is dominating because his music or her music is good. Mm-hmm. They bring it down to you know the tribal baseline, which is a very, very big problem. And there's nothing that annoys me than hearing that reason. Yeah, so. Uh looking into how some of the artists break into the media airplay and they go beyond where they come from the question that i normally ask is how do they do it i, I think it, it all goes uh, back to the producer a lot of us do not you know uh, appreciate the work done by the producer but trust me right now music is all about production yeah. It's no longer about the message yeah. or what, uh, whatever the content is. Yeah. It's all about the production. Yeah. You know, someone might be singing about peace, about reconciliation, something that makes so much sense mm. to this current generation. Mm. But if the production is not good, trust me, that's someone going away. Yeah. Someone comes to. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not going to give examples. <laughs> but there's some trending songs right now. <laughs> if you break it down, yeah. there's nothing much comes off from it. Yeah. But credit all goes back to the production team. So. I think it's uh, the chemistry between the producer, uh, the artist, and the content at that very particular point in time yeah. that plays much of the role when it comes to you know, songs that break through. Uh, well, you were mentioning, I was thinking of another international song. <laughs> it's a lover right now. <laughs> and everyone is using the, the words from that song. Mm. I have one of the questions I asked on Fridays, but have people really asked what that song is about? I just hope you're not talking about the same song <laughs> in my head. If we had the liberty to mention, we would, but uh, for now we would not. You, you, you mentioned uh, producers as part of uh, the reason why some people freely get into the airplay. Uh, what significance do songwriters have in the country in South Sudan? What role have they played? The first question is, do we have songwriters? Yeah. If we do, mm. where are they? Mm. Who are they? Yeah. Why are they not, you know, you know, uh, uh, in, in in the scene? Yeah. Because uh, you know, wherever you go, mm. where there's entertainment, yeah. there will always be producers, the songwriters, the singers, yeah. and all that. Mm. And 
almost all over the world, you know, the songwriters are always given credit. Mm, yeah. Even on the biography of the song, oh, yeah. if you check, you will always see the name of uh, the songwriters. Yeah. But in the country, yeah, you cannot even hear, you know, a singer trying to give credit to the person that wrote the song. Mm -hmm. So basically, I think uh, th th there should be. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I think the, the, the songwriters should have to have their own city. Mm. What people usually term is the union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they really have to sit down mm. and sort things out. Mm. Because if things are going to continue like this, I do not see uh, light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that it also has a way of discouraging them because uh, we know of so many songs right now that are trending or that are trended and they were clearly written by someone else, not the artist. Unfortunately, even when some of these songs got uh, recognition by the awarding companies we have in South Sudan, the artist, not a single woman mentions the songwriter's name. Exactly. All they do is, you know, thanks to my fans. Who are your fans? Yeah. Start yeah. with the people that really play the role in making yeah. that song a success. Behind the scenes, people. Yes. Yeah. Thereafter, you can come to your family now, your spouses and your fans. Yeah. All that will make sense. Mm. But you rush straight to your fun. It, it, it's, it's really a, a very, very bad mindset. I mm. think we really need to change that. Yeah. First, if we organize the songwriters, I think there will be, you know, some bit of competition in writing. Yeah. Because people know that work is not going unnoticed. Mm. You understand? Yeah. People will talk about your content. Yeah. If it's good, people will definitely appreciate you. If it's not good, people will criticize you. Yeah. That is assured. It will happen. Yeah. So if that happens, there will always be, you know, uh, that you know, self guilt. You yeah. don't want to write things out. You don't want to write stuff. You go mm. through it and mm. all that before you give it out to someone that will, you know, yeah. go voice it and mm. and all that. And I think if uh, that happens, there will be more people involved in writing, yeah. which of course will create competition. And wherever there's competition, there's always quality. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, and that also, I think one of the reasons why they need to be recognized is at the end of the day, they also need some money in their pockets. Definitely. The artists, even if they're not being paid by promoters for performing, they at least have a moment where fans will be giving them money while they're performing. Mm. Uh, one of uh, the artists one time uh, sat down with him and he gave a story of how at one point he was making his money. He would perform at any Event. Any event, regardless whether he's paid or not, because he knew that at the end of the day, the fans are going to come out and give him money. And he needed that money at that time. So he did that strategy for some time. But yeah, when we do uh, recognize the songwriters, I think we'll also be able to attract more people to buy their songs. I don't know, first of all, how much a song is, how much it cost in the country. I think I've interviewed one of the songwriters. Mm. Apparently, he writes a song for a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Yeah, and I think he's written some songs that are mm. right now trending All right. by All some right. of these prominent female musicians. I don't know why. Oh yes, <laughs> actually, <laughs> <the> female musicians. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know plenty of the female who have been they wrote for them songs, mm. and I, have, I haven't had them appreciating. So, or one time maybe when I get a chance to talk with them. I'll see why they don't do it. Or do they think that because they bought the song, if they did, uh, you're not supposed to mention the songwriter? That's one particular question I don't have an answer to. Yeah. But I think even if you pay a million dollars for it, mm -hmm. you'd have to give credit. Yeah, yeah you have to. Mm. In my own knowledge, I think they do that. Yeah, but uh, they, I know our entertainment industry has a lot of things that we still need to sort. If if you were asked, what is that one thing that you think we should start with? What do you think is that thing that we can begin with and try to sort out this whole mess here and there? I think uh, I will give an advice based on uh, individuals. Yeah. Sort yourself before you sort the industry. Sort yourself out. That is for, to the musicians. Yeah. If you think there's a problem facing the industry, mm. first look at the problems facing you as an individual. Mm. Find out, you know, the possible solutions. Mm -hmm. Fix yourself. Yeah. I think if we all can do that, I think we'll be at a better stage compared to where we are right now. Yeah, and that's a very sunny reason. One of the famous saying goes that if you want to be the change, you be the change. And there's a word so that the disco has rephrased and uh, but given advice to the artist. If you think that 
uh, the media has a problem <laughs> maybe you first ask yourself if you're the problem yourself and then if you notice that you don't have any problem then you can come and attack people like the disco definitely <laughs> it, it, you know, there's one thing uh, that has been bothering me for quite a long time yeah you know whenever you host a musician mm. there's one thing they will never walk out of the studio without saying Jinobin don't support oh yeah the question is who are the Jinobin when you get, you know, some money, mm. the first thing you think of is running away from South Sudan. And these are the same Jinobin you want to attack when you make a song. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. Sometimes you should be, you know, accountable to ourselves before we criticize people. Yeah, yeah. I do agree. You make money or you get a chance to go and record in Uganda or Kenya, yeah. you take that and you embrace it wholeheartedly. Like, what you've been doing with the producers in the country has been nonsense. Yeah. What do you think they will feel about how you're acting? Like, we're recording with someone that is not in the country. There are some songs I know that were recorded from outside, and I was like, "But what is this? <laughs> what did you really go to do outside there?" <laughs> I mean, and then in my head, a producer's name would jump into my head. I'd be like, "Okay, now funny producers jump into my head." I'd be like, "But so and so would give you the same product." Exactly. If you never wanted uh, the best in the country, those who are prominent to record for you. But it's, very, it's a very sad thing and often I think some, some of the artists think that uh, by virtue if you record from outside it is a treasure or it is gold exactly well a very ill mind <laughs> <laughs> that's very unfortunate <laughs> yeah but uh, the disco thank you for coming before I let you go though mm -hmm. uh, I will have we'll have the disco back again for some other interaction on one particular genre sometime in the future that is, uh, uh, while we were offline, I mentioned that hip hop and he says old school hip hop. That one. So we will talk about old school hip hop in the next episode and also a few things. But now I want to ask him some questions coming in from the game. And never have I ever. ever. So here are the questions and I want you to listen to his answers. Never have I ever regifted a gift. Never have I ever gifted. Give it back give. a gift. Yeah. For example, I buy you a watch, uh, <laughs> then uh, you give it out. <laughs> uh, um, I'm sorry, I've never intended to give out a gift, yeah. but that's happened. <laughs> you know, things move on unknowingly. I, I, I think one of those that really kept me, you know, bothered for some time was. Uh, was a watch. Mm. It was given to me by someone I never liked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, I kept it. Not until oh, a brother of mine took that my lonely. Uh, uh, so uh, that's how it went. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you never liked the person to the extent that anything associated to them <laughs> was never to be seen close to you. <laughs> well, that was an extra. <laughs> anyway, next question. Uh, let's see. Uh, never have I ever been on a blind date. If there are many, let me hear one of them. Wild, but yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. I've been on a blind date. Yeah. Then how was the story, experience? Yeah. I could say a very boring story. <laughs> very scary at the same time, you know. <laughs> it's what people say, walking through the valley. Yeah, of, of the shadow of death. That one. Yeah. I'm not a good person, so... <laughs> <laughs> at least you remember that. Yeah, you, at, least, yeah. at least you know that there's something that well, was uh, in that uh, line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good beginning. <laughs> so, uh, it's like walking through what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're, you're yeah, can sure. we learn it? You're, you're, walking you're, through the valley of the shadow of death. The death. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. walking through the valley of, of the, the shadow, shadow of the death. death. Yeah. yeah. That one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're going through something, you're not mm. sure of the end result. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. You know, at some point there will be excitement, yeah. but when the action begins, you know, yeah. there's always that fear, yeah. you know, you're nervous, the anxiety and all that. Mm. So I think that's how it all started. Yeah. I was very excited. I wanted to see who this person really is. Yeah. Because, you know, on the phone there's uh, someone very exciting. Mm, yeah. But, uh, you know, the fear, the anxiety and all that made me, you know, hide myself and peek from afar. Yeah. I wanted to see 
what was coming to me. What is this that is coming? Yeah. Uh, so, well, I could say the person had the same had the same mindset by then. So the person yeah. kind of also hit us off and yeah. made the call. I'm not seeing you, and I was like, I'm not seeing you. I'm yeah. here. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, we had to all leave. Yeah. Just seeing each other, <laughs> and that was the end. You people never talk again. <laughs> never. <laughs> Thank you for coming the disco. It's a pleasure. We meet it. again in the second edition Sahara. of the story of Queen Girl. It's a pleasure. See you. Yeah. Goodbye. See you again. Thank <laughs> you.